quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Lately, the term corona causes anxiety and fear. It wasn't always so. Corona is a Spanish word for crown and is commonly used in many fields, including science and art, to indicate a halo or ring around an object such as the gaseous ring around the sun visible only during eclipse or the outer edge of a flower. In other words, something rare, beautiful, and valuable. Something to inspire creativity and crush fear. Let's celebrate the name Corona and learn about this lovely 1935 Corona Standard Typewriter. A thing of beauty created in the middle of the Great Depression. A time of anxiety and uncertainty, not unlike our own, from which we can draw inspiration. Howdy folks. As Kevin noted, the name Corona didn't use to spark anxiety but instead admiration or even awe. It evoked royalty and grandeur or even a majestic beauty, like a halo in an artwork or surrounding the sun. And given that, I think this typewriter is well named. The Smith Corona Standard, built in 1935. Now, this was another period of anxiety and uncertainty in U.S. history, but despite this, our fellow Americans were able to produce items of enduring beauty and usefulness. Lots of folks call these machines flat tops, and you can certainly see why. The name definitely fits. But the official name is Square Line for this particular style. Um, although, interestingly enough, if you go to the Smith Corona website, they show pictures of these beautiful machines, which we'll roll in, and they label them as flat tops. So I don't think you can go wrong by either calling them flat top or square line. I kind of like the name flat top but I think Square Line is probably the most correct official name. In any case, this styling evokes for me uh, more of an arts and crafts feel. You have a simplified stamped case. You've got some interesting styling here, which is just a stamping. Uh, you have flat and not very unornamental uh, design features. So straight lines, little tabs come out. Um, elegant, but not overstated. Um, chrome work and trim work and very nice uh, gold, now sort of fading to silver as they've been worn, uh, decals. And so we see two of those. One interesting thing you note on the first version of these Corona standards is some of them will say standard underneath, but it, presumably in the first year of production, which this machine is, 1935, they did not have standard stamped or uh, indicated underneath the brand name Corona. And this was right after the merger of L.C. Smith and Corona typewriters. So the interwar period right after the merger of those two companies to produce the more customary Smith Corona uh, produced these machines. Let's give a quick overview of the functionality of the machine. As was so common at the time, you do not have a dedicated number one or exclamation uh, mark. You have no tab on this machine, um, but you do have some nice features. Certainly you have a manual ribbon reverse key here which you can select to uh, force the ribbons to uh, reverse. They, are, they do have triggers, so they should auto-reverse, but if it doesn't happen or when you want it to, you can simply uh, raise or lower that uh, key and it will change the direction of the ribbon. You have a ribbon color selector switch, red, white, and blue, as is the standard. White, of course, is the stencil position. Um, again, no tabs, so you'll not find that key. You have nice nickel-plated or chromed uh, keys with either glass or celluloid uh, covers, caps, keycaps, I guess. Uh, sometimes these get crooked a little bit, as you might be able to see. We'll raise up. The E here in QWERTY is a little bit off, and of course they're somewhat yellowed. I'm sure those were brand new, bright white once upon a time, but it's uh, rather difficult to replace those. You can, if you have a machine like this, fix this rotation. Sometimes they're all the way upside down, um, but it's a bit of a process. Some, some of the keys have little tabs underneath them, and others do not. But uh, one method I've been seen by Dwayne Jensen, a Phoenix typewriter, is to use sharp pointed objects and physically rotate the caps. Now, I'm not sure that would totally work 
with these because they have tabs on the underneath side which seem to be holding them down. In any case, I'm not that much of a OCD person that a 15 degree, sorry, 14 degree, wait a minute, what was I saying about OCD? A rotation on my E key would cause me to try to wreck the machine. Um, but I'm very happy with this. And as this is obviously a time of uncertainty in our country, this one has a unique story to me. Um, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, I decided to write my own Corona Diaries of the COVID-19 crisis, which we are all presently undergoing as of uh, late March, as it is today, the 22nd of March. And it's been really a, 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 quite a help for me just to write down the small things that have happened and some of the large things that have happened in our family and in our country's history. And it just seemed utterly appropriate and uh, perfectly timed that I was able to find this machine at a local estate sale uh, right as we were all getting a little bit more anxious than we wanted to be about having any kind of social contact with anyone. So when I picked this up from an estate sale of a typewriter slash copier slash cash machine, uh, cash register repairman, I was walking through the estate sale solely by myself with a disinfecting wipe clutched fearfully in my hands and uh, touching as little as possible. And that really is kind of a snapshot in time, not unlike the 30s were in a different sense uh, with the Great Depression. And again, this idea that things of great beauty can come out of times of great uncertainty and distress. And that's what I'd like to focus on today. But this machine will always be a special one for me and I, I doubt that I will ever sell it. So, overview. Um, underneath your ribbon cover here, which pops up very simply, or this is a little bit, there we go. You have just your standard Smith Corona floating shift uh, layout. So you have your touch control over here on the left, um, your obviously ribbon spools, you have your carriage shifted action, your ruler as always. Now this was uh, early on, so your paper bale isn't there yet, but you have the paper fingers. And they kept these paper fingers all the way into the mid-50s, uh, late 50s, on the 5 Series. So this is the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4. Uh, these work pretty well. And when you when they got these, these were, of course, frozen up a little bit. And uh, you can free these up with a little lacquer thinner and compressed air, and they start rolling pretty nicely. Um, I don't prefer them over uh, your standard paper bale because I find that they get in the way a little bit as you're typing, if your margins are uh, full-length margins. But they're very simple and easy to use. Uh, of course, your line selector is over here. Hard to do one-handed, but we'll get around. So your line selector here, you have single and double spacing on this particular model, a nice knob to make that selection. Your carriage return lever is here, carriage release. Uh, your paper roller release, tension release lever is here for adjusting your paper. And you have a second carriage release lever here. As there are no tabs, you don't have to worry about that. And this presents a very clean uh, back, back half of the machine. So what these are here are your margins, which you simply press and slide to adjust. That design also maintained itself for many years. And your paper tray, which can be folded up. Uh, I don't think people did a lot of erasing on these particular models because the Corona is in such good shape on the decal. So those are an overview of the features uh, of this machine. And in a second, we'll give you a quick overview of how she types. All right, let's go ahead and put some paper in. The platen on this machine, uh, while somewhat hard, is surprisingly still pretty pliable. And that uh, gives a pretty good impression. And here we, we show the adjusting of the paper. Squaring that up. Rolling it down, and we'll set our paper fingers where we want them. And we'll go from there. So you can sort of see how they go to the very edge. Hopefully you can catch that, and I'll give you a typing test around the phone, so we'll see how it goes. Rather than typing the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, I thought I'd go a little deeper with some Kipling. If you can, keep your head with all, all around you. Our men are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Uh, no more good advice. So very nice standard pica uh, typeface. Has a brand new ribbon, gives a good impression. Now you'll notice when I return the carriage that the carriage return is a little bit noisier. And I'm not honestly 100% sure. Well, I'm fairly certain that that is because there is not a silencer spring on the escapement and or if there is mine is not working and I uh, 
I just don't see it. So I think that's just standard operation of the course for 1935. Um, it's a little bit loud, but it doesn't bother me. It's just part of the typewriter now. It's funny because I have a brother, of course, from the 1960s, that has almost identical sound, and it drove me nuts because I know it's designed to be quieter. But feeling that this one is not designed to be quieter, I just accept it as part of part of the typewriter. And that's sometimes the best way to uh, accept a flaw or something in the typewriter is just to realize that's how they meant, they meant it to be. It's not, a, it's not a bug, it's a feature. In any case, it's hard to think of any bugs in this machine. It's very beautiful, beautiful glossy black uh, scheme. Now, I will talk a little bit about maintaining these if you happen to pick one up for yourself. When you get these machines, many times they're not as quite as nice as this, and this has been polished and waxed quite a bit. But the first thing you do, if you put almost any kind of cleaning agent, even the most gentle, Dawn dish soap, just any kind of spraying, simple green, you'll get a brown sludge that comes off of these. And I still haven't completely uh, determined what the right thing to do, the perfect thing to do to prevent that. Because what that brown sludge is, it's not nicotine. A lot of folks think it is. But it's actually the, the actual finish coming off. I've had it on enough machines to know, whoops, that's the actual finish. There doesn't seem to be any way to make the machine really get that blistering bright shine without at least inadvertently getting rid of that uh, dead finish basically is once you get that off very carefully you don't want to scrub too hard until that stuff's gone almost as wa water with a little tiny bit of soap will get it to come up then you can begin the process of applying uh, your buffing compounds and then ultimately your choice of carnauba waxes or if you have the cash and the ability to get it then the renaissance wax i am told is probably the single best thing you can use. I don't have access to that right now, and I'm pretty happy with the gloss I got on this using just Meguiar's, Scratch X, uh, Carnauba, that kind of thing, Carnuba, however you pronounce that. In any case, um, this is a great typing machine, a piece of history, and uh, I want to give you another snapshot. So this machine was produced from 1935 to about 1941, if my notes are correct. And what was interesting is um, Smith Corona at that time also introduced another variant, which is still called the Corona Standard, and it was the Speedline so model. We have a Smith Corona flat top square line model on the right from 1935, and here we have a four years younger Smith Corona, but in the Speedline style from 1939. So other than the very obvious more angular, or rather more curvy um, ribbon cover, uh, and the fact that this is a crinkle coat with a single stripe, later on they added more and more stripes. It's uh, pretty much an identical machine. Um, your carriage return arm has been elongated in the later variant uh, of the uh, machine. But other than that, it's pretty much, that's pretty much it. It's identical. It's just a cosmetic change, just a stylistic change. Uh, if there were more improvements, ah, one of the other things is they started being happy about their floating shift. This uh, 1C variant certainly has a floating shift, but they didn't call it that, at least not in their logoing. And here we have it, boom, right in the middle of a segment floating shift. Did the streamline model uh, replace the square line? Well, in a way, yes, but they both were concurrently in the market for a number of years, which is interesting. In 1938, they introduced the speed line, and they announced it, and that ran until 41. In 41, they produced the Series 3, and the Series 3 was uh, split into the 3S, the 3A, and the 3C, the 3C being the standard, the A being the sterling, and the 3S being the silent. Let's do a quick comparison of the typing action, if I can. Give you a little bit of an oblique angle. All right, competing in my Kipling. Then you'll be a man, my son, after many verses. It's interesting. The, the feel is definitely different. And what's kind of cool, they're both great. Um, but if I had to choose, boy, I would choose the, this particular variant. It would be the flat top. Uh, and maybe that's just because I bonded with it by writing 25 pages of Corona Diaries in 15 days. But um, what's neat is I'll try to show you this if you can hear it. This machine has a very slightly heavier feel to it, and I think it's more than just a touch control. Um, but when you're typing, you can almost hear the springs singing to you as you're typing. I know that sounds a little anthropomorphic perhaps, but... Uh, if you've got one of these and you type, you'll notice it. It's something that's kind of distinctive on these Corona standards uh, of this 1930s vintage. So, all in all, uh, pros and cons of these machines. Well, the pros are absolutely they're glorious, glorious, gorgeous, good looks. And the fact that these are artifacts of time, they're more precious to me now because they, I'm fully aware of um, 
the idea that they came from a period of darkness and uh, difficulty in our nation and our world, and that they were things of beauty that were still capable of being produced, and that we have still continued to treasure them, that they're still useful as agents and engines of creativity and of inspiration. And I hope that this brief, if not overlong, overview of the Corona standard, 1935 and 1935 variants, 39 variants, uh, will help inspire, inspire you and that we can retake the name Corona and make it mean more something like it should, which is that is something inspirational, th something of beauty, and, and something of creativity that can help us as we weather our own dark times. God bless. Please like, subscribe, and share.